Thank you guys for coming. Um, this is my Thank you guys for coming. This is my very good friend Clint Brown and mentor. He's here to talk to you a little bit about social media marketing and see if there's anything, any type of knowledge we can give you um, as agents. And if you have any questions, we'll do that at the end as well. Awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. My name is Clint Brown, and uh, I heard that this is shaky, so I might go back and forth between a black screen and our little seasick opportunity here. Um, so we'll, we'll just kind of roll with that. If you get motion sick, just give me the high sign or something. Um, so I live in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I was born and raised, I was born in Al or, uh, Oklahoma City, grew up in Albuquerque. So someone asked me if I'm West River. Yes, I think Albuquerque is officially West River. Um, where I grew up in Edgewood looks a lot more like this, um, very arid. Um, we didn't have to mow because there wasn't grass. Dirt, cactus, cedar trees, pinyon, and that's it. And so I'm very comfortable out in the higher altitude. My parents' house is 7,000 feet altitude where I grew up, so this is getting a little more home. I feel like I'm down by the ocean in Sioux Falls. But I married a girl from Sioux Falls, ended up there. Um, and I'll show you a little bit about uh, my family is my wife, Katie. This is the reason I moved. This is how it works in South Dakota. You make really smart, independent women that are cute. You send them out. They bring back men. You make more babies. Um, it works. So this is my very Dutch wife that I married. Um, and we are busy creating Dutch-looking children. Uh, this is Claire. She's 11. Um, and she is quite the pickle. Um, and then this is Miles. He is a Taekwondo machine. We're getting ready to go to the world tournament. He won nationals. He won the world's in Baton Rouge. Um, he's nine. Second degree black belt. Um, this is Amelia. She is my five year old. And um, just crazy and fantastic. We're on a date. She asks for a date every Monday. She asks me when's our date. Our dates are every Saturday, but every Monday we have to reschedule it. And we go to Queen City Bakery and we have a monster cookie and a hot chocolate. So we go on our dates. We don't talk on our dates, though. She's very, very introverted. So we just sit and have our monster cookie in silence. We take a selfie, and we go home. So if I talk, she'll say, no, Dad. OK. That's how you roll. This is uh, Evelyn. Uh, this is her wearing a baby backpack carrier thing, because my wife wears her, so you got to just keep it going. This is her breaking into the fridge. And she is that Henri. Like, whatever comes to your mind in that face, it's very, very true. Um, so she's our professional interior redecorator. Um, she's, you know, right now in the process of, like, learning that she can throw everything away and flush stuff down the toilet. She's learned what Sharpies are. She's that age. So um, she's fantastic. So four kiddos. We homeschool two of them. The two oldest. If, if my life wasn't crazy enough, we homeschool. Our third child, uh, Amelia. She's in a PT program. She's got some motor school issues, so she goes to elementary school, and then this one just destroys the house professionally. Um, I own a business called The Bakery. It's in this. This is my building. Um, it was a bakery in 1914. We renovated it. Um, it was a bit of a bird's nest from when I got a hold of it a year and a half ago. Um, it is, oh, 9,000 square feet, three floors uh, building, and it is the largest co-working collaborative space in the Midwest. Um, so I had this sort of vision a little about two years ago and that we could create a space where entrepreneurs of all shapes and sizes could come together and uh, found this property. We thought it would be really cool if we had 150 clients, we would just be crushing it. Um, and we have 450 clients and we're about a year old. So it's been sort of nuts. Um, and that's where this character comes in. Uh, Miss Meg was one of the ladies on our launch team. Um, and that's a crazy experience. And then uh, Senator Theron shows up all the time. Uh, it feels like a really staged photo, but we have to, I was looking through Facebook and we have lots of photos with us and John, so he's around and this is one of our, God knows what, one of our events. Um, and we, uh, it's a busy place and I work with uh, you know hundreds of professionals. Uh, I end up teaching a lot of classes on social media and all sorts of other things. Um, we have done very well on our own social media, so the stuff I'm telling you, I don't apologize, uh, the stuff I'm telling you is stuff that we use, um, and we are lean and mean. We do not spend a lot of money. I think my ad spend on Facebook from last year was maybe $1,500 total, and so we run very, very lean. We try to create experiences that people want to participate in, um, and 
Uh, we're the second largest version of R in our industry in America. And we have the second largest Facebook following, the second highest engagement. When Facebook travels, they ask us to come speak. So we're pretty familiar with what works there. Uh, we also use Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and whatever, Anchor, whatever other crazy thing we feel like not doing. But that's a great place. If you're ever in Sioux Falls, pop in. You can have a day pass on me. Um, we're in partnership with the garage here and the own, if you know those two spaces. And we've actually collectively brought all the ones together from Fargo to um, Manhattan, Kansas. And so if you're a member of the owner of the garage, you're actually a member of my facility and may not even know it. Um, and you can move between all these facilities at no additional cost. So we brought this whole region together. So as a professional, if you find that you're out and about and you travel, um, you know, get to know the own or the garage here, and uh, then you get to be sort of in our ecosystem. So let's jump into social media. The first question, I guess, is why even bother? So tell me, why even bother with social media? We had a great lunch when we talked about handshakes and thank you cards, right? It's old school, so why bother with social media? It's where people are. Okay, it's where people are, maybe your customers. It's cheap, efficient advertising. Okay, yeah. Compared to billboards and stuff like that. Yeah, some of the older methods are pricey, especially as they have a harder and harder time keeping market share. Yeah, the jack and it's a current trend. It's trendy, okay. Good introduction to yourself before you meet someone. Yeah, it's a safe, it's a really safe and sterile way to meet somebody. Oh, what if this person's a creep? Oh, they seem pretty funny or nice or their kids are cute. They do a lot of business, they've got good ratings. What else? Why fuss over it at all? Joe Bennett is doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could be reason enough. It's the future. Okay. It's going to be here forever and keep on going. Yeah. I think that we, you know, as, as we grew into this, I'm 37 years old, so I'm like the perfect age to have participated in like every integration of computer stuff through my academic career growing up. Like we were the first school to get an Apple computer that we saved this Campbell soup labels, right? By the <laughs> millions to get an Apple computer on the cart, get one for the whole school. Like I was that age, I was the, in that grade. Um, 1993, I was part of the supercomputing challenge put on by the Department of Energy when the when the government thought it'd be great to teach high schoolers programming. I was the perfect, I was a freshman in high school when that happened, like it just happened through this. And so I think that what, what's interesting about social media is I, it's, it's just the, the in-between of humans is how we're gonna communicate with one another. The platform's sort of irrelevant. You know, if it's Snapchat or Twitter or whatever, that'll change. Um, but we'll expect to have this sort of social experience. I think you're certainly right there. I can't see it going away. Um, who knows what the next version will be. Anything else? Some of you may be asking this myself. Why do I even bother with this? I spend so much time. Um, here's how I look at it. Let's say you want to reach this lady. This is my wife and youngest. And um, she's probably damn near in a target audience that most of you want. Uh, she's 40, four kids, we have a decent income, we own a successful business, two businesses. Um, you know, I like having a house in a backyard by an elementary school. I'm pretty like middle of the road, growing my career, growing my family, homeowner type experience. The question is, how in the world do you get her attention? Right? I mean, she's uh, she's running Taekwondo six times a week. She's at gymnastics three times a week. She's at uh, Bible study. She goes to her parents' office and runs their office twice a week. Church, high V, and God knows what else. Right? <laughs> and so, how do you how do you catch this woman? Um, what time do you think she's on Facebook the most? Morning. When in the morning? Uh, Four in the morning. Two a.m. Two in the morning. Because yeah. she's nursing this one. Uh. And she's bored. <coughs> right? While she's nursing the baby. So she participates in a group that I've helped uh, uh, advise on for uh, nursing mothers. And they have their meetups at one, two, and three in the morning. <laughs> and there's like 8,000 of them in the group. It's <laughs> crazy. Because that's when they're on. That's when they got time. They have nothing else going on, right? Like, how many memes can you look at at one in the morning? <laughs> so you might want to chat with another female who's experiencing the same thing in real time somewhere else in the world. It matters. So she might be a great customer, but interrupting her day to catch her attention, sending her mail may not be the best way. I came home the other day. My five-year-old had taken the mail and sat down and the scissors and cut it into confetti. All the mail. 
<laughs> my bills, checks, you name it, it was this pile of confetti around. So maybe mail in our house is a little risky. I don't know that you're ever going to get her attention on a billboard because you're trying to put a pacifier in someone's mouth, the phone's ringing, someone's wanting a different channel on the radio, one of the kids is pissed that we're outside of Wi-Fi range and now they can't play their game on their iPod because they don't understand that Wi-Fi is not everywhere, right? So she might be in a place where she's hard to get. So you might have to go through this device to catch her because this is intimate. Intimate, right? I was this close to you? I'm in her intimate space. Right? I'm in her hands. <laughs> She's touching it and interacting with it. So that's how you can sort of interrupt and get in front of her. Social media would be by far the way. Hell, if I want to get a hold of my wife right now, I'd probably have a better chance posting something on Facebook <laughs> than I do texting her or calling her. <laughs> She's probably clearing out her Facebook notifications first. So I've got some, some principles that I go by. So we're going to dive into a couple of principles. And then, uh, and then I've looked for me. My methodology, if you follow me and you're welcome to go on Facebook, look at Clint Brown. Friend me. I have a pub professional page. I never updated. I'm just stuck to the, the regular page. Um, most of my stuff is silly. For those of your good friends, I mean, it's like I just put stupid stuff online because I like making people smile, and if I can do that, I can bridge a lot of gaps. Right? We can get into the weeds. I'm I'm the type of person who like. I shake people's hands, and then I have like friends that have huge depths of information on like crazy intimate friendships. I don't have much, a lot of in between. I'm not a small talk guy, so I'll just keep it at the funny level. But if we go have lunch or dinner or something, we'll, we might really dive deep. So I like funny. My dad was also a stand-up comedian when I was a kid, so I just like funny things. So, um, but I want to create a situation where people anticipate. So you might ask yourself, I'm getting ready to post this listing, this picture, this quote, this whatever. Is this something that someone's going to anticipate, want to anticipate the future? Or are they just going to be like, they're just posting more crap? And most of what people post is crap. Like, how many of you just go like this in your timeline? I mean, that's that's how it works, right? You're like, at a stoplight, let's be honest. <laughs> on the toilet, and you're just like, mm, I'm getting dumber. Or if you're like me now, unfollow, unfollow. Uh, just like I'm tired of hearing, right? I'm just like I can. You're so predictable. I anticipate you, but I don't. Second one, which is appreciate. Create appreciation. This is a little bit harder. It's easy to create anticipation. So if you uh, wake up every day and you decide to post something gross to social media at six in the morning, every morning, by the third morning, your friends are going to have you dialed in. They'll be anticipating that next post. They're not going to appreciate it. So I asked myself, am I creating something that people are going to look forward to and then be excited when it comes? Their day is going to be better. If I'm taking up Joe's time, 30 seconds, three seconds on social media, did I make him better? Did I add value to his life? Or did I just take up his time? I don't know if like, I see people like, oh, this article's killer, and I read it, and I'm like, I'm dumber. <laughs> From reading that, it's the dumbest article. You know, like the seven steps to a better marriage or something. And it's like, <laughs> be nice. <laughs> and it can be in any platform. It could be news, Facebook, you name it. What's something you like look forward to if you see? Like, oh, that's something I would. Videos, reality. Okay. A video, okay? Yeah. I'm a food guy. Food posts. <laughs> yeah, <Fresh> me too. <laughs> And I made a mistake of like ordering an entire loaf of meatloaf on an entire loaf of bread at Murphy's. Yes. It was a sandwich, but it wasn't it was a whole meal. But I ate it all. Crushed it. Yeah. I won't eat for three days. <laughs> what else? Do you appreciate seeing it online? Like you will stop what you're doing and like consume it. Something really that's relevant to your personal interests. Okay, relevant to whatever your interests are. Something over here. Something funny. Something funny. Though I can only take so many like memes, cat gifts, right? I got my other limits. Never an end. Never enough. Oh, <laughs> like symbols like a football. Let's say like I love the Green Bay Packers, and I think Green Bay Packers like a boom, I stop. Okay, yeah, so you're a fan of that. Right. It catches your eye. Right. Yeah. Anything else? Something shocking. What like what? Oh, like some of the videos you'll see. To catch your attention. Like fail videos? Yeah. Like fail videos. Isn't that sad? But I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, we're talking about people at Walmart at lunch. Or people at Walmart. <laughs> people at Walmart.com. Yeah. If you ever need a day where you need to feel better about yourself, <laughs> yeah. go to people at Walmart.com and. Yeah, as long as you're not in the photo, you see yourself. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Inspirational. Something inspirational. Isn't it funny how I find some people like all their posts are inspirational quotes? Like they stick with a theme like that's their gig. We've got a guy on our team. He's addicted to iFunny. I don't even know what iFunny is. I just know that my phone is blowing up with his posts of iFunny. Really like screen capturing or something and reposting really stupid stuff that he thinks is funny. I'm constantly trying to block him. He's my own staff. <laughs> like, stop sending me that stuff. I don't care. It's stupid. Anything else you sort of appreciate? Things from the past. Okay. He's a huge Yeah. Yeah. I like to learn. I'm sort of an obsessive learner, and if I find someone can open a world of information that I don't know, um, there's a there's a Facebook page if you're brave enough to follow it because it'll show on Facebook. It's called I effing the word. Love science. Super interesting. It is. There's crazy interesting stuff on there, right? There's also another one, a blog that posts on Facebook regularly called Art of Manliness. Does anybody follow that? Oh, you should check out Art of Manliness. One of the best bloggers in America, Brett McKay. Him and his wife, Claudia of Tulsa. It's the most interesting journey through history and manhood that's I mean, his blog blog was like 9,000 words. I mean, it's not like, this is funny. I mean, he's curating this experience. It's brilliant. And so if he posts, I will like put it in my calendar to deal with that post. Right? That's something I really anticipate and really appreciate because I'm altering my schedule to consume it. Imagine if you could create that experience with your clients. They're like, oh, I saw it. Uh, hang on a second. got to block off 7 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 3 o'clock to deal with this. So most of us don't think that way. We just like... Either we overthink the post. Who in here is an overthinker? Like you're like, I gotta put something brilliant on Facebook. <laughs> and then you look yes. Meg, okay. Mm -hmm. Meg's being honest. And you like poke and you edit and you change and then you show a friend and you're like, I'm thinking, and then maybe and then <laughs> it's like thirty seven minutes just to come up with a Facebook status. That's too much. How do you determine what you can plagiarize? How do you determine what you're plagiarizing? What you can plagiarize. What you can plagiarize. Is that a question or is that just hypothetical? Um, well, I will tell you we're all plagiarizing on the web, and uh, uh, media law attorneys are just up to their eyeballs trying to figure out what to do because the, certainly millennials have more of a sense that information is open source, right? Everything's the Wikipedia model, and so um, the key I find online to keep your nose clean, though I've never heard of anybody being prosecuted or even reached out to, is just citing, you know, if you read a great article, say, I found this awesome article on Forbes, they talk about this. People love that because they want the links. Yeah. Who here is like, you post stuff and you're like, oh, that wasn't a good idea. <laughs> I think everybody's done that once or twice. <laughs> now that I think about it, right, so you post and like three seconds later your wife texts you. She's like, uh, did you mean? Is that what you were intending? Yeah. 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 So yeah, I mean you can we can be sort of either end of the spectrum, right? Sort of like posting uh, too quick or maybe taking too long. But I do put some thought into it. Um, on my desktop, sometimes I have a sticky note that says um, uh, anticipate, appreciate, and the third one, which is uh, create action. You guys are in the business of getting humans to take action. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. Um, so this is where it gets really difficult. You can have people anticipate hearing you. They can think, oh, that's so nice of them to send it, but are they going to do anything with that? And my guess is you're in the business of getting people to do something. Phone call, click, open, fill out a form, show up somewhere, and they got to do. Otherwise, you're just blasting stuff to the interwebs, and it's not growing your business. And that gets you really hard. There's a science and an art to learning how your, your customers are going to respond. Um, at the bakery, we do lots and lots of posts. And we think about this. Um, one of our biggest drivers with the bakery is we want to show pictures of bringing the community together. And we ask that, does this photo stick with our brand message? Are we bringing the community together? Are there lots of humans coming together in this photo? Or are we just taking, do we find a frog in the base if we're taking a photo because we think it's funny? Because that, you know, life happens. But we curate that pretty heavily. 
And we want people to take action. So it's like, go listen to this podcast, click on this link, get a free day pass, come visit us, join us for a potluck, talk to your friends. So if you're sending an email or you're, you're on Instagram or whatever you're doing, you might ask yourself, what's someone supposed to do after they consume this from me? You post a picture on Instagram and you think it's the money shot. It's the best <laughs> picture of the sun setting over a deck and the grass sparkly you've ever done. <laughs> and you get like 47 likes. So? <laughs> right? Like what, what am I supposed to do with this? I have a business partner who right now is gallivanting around Europe. I don't know what he's doing. I really, I really have no idea what he's doing. I'm guessing he's maybe Paris somewhere. His Snapchat last night was Paris. Um, and his, his like, I think he thinks that his bank accepts Facebook likes. Because he'll be like, dude, crushing it. I got like 315 likes on that Facebook photo. I'm like, awesome, run to the bank free. They're depreciating. I want to cash them in. Right? I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that photo of you in the Eiffel Tower in the back that every other human who's been there has taken. <laughs> Right? I can just Photoshop myself in with better lighting at the Apple Tower and post it. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. What is a consumer supposed to do in a business? Maybe you're just posting because you like the sort of narcissism of it. Awesome, knock yourself out. But in business, I have to ask myself, what do I want someone to do? You know? Like, I jumped on Facebook a little while ago and said, I'm going to be, I'll do Facebook Live here in a minute. Um, I'm going to be in Rapid doing Facebook Live. Hop on. But giving them something to do. The longer I've been doing this, the more I realize people do want something to do. And the strange thing is they think it's more valuable if you give them something to do. Like, if you teach a workshop like this sometime, right? I'm not going to give you guys too much homework. But if you want people to really, if you charge for a workshop, give them just shit tons of homework. Just tons of homework. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, it's the best workshop I ever went to. I know, 9,000 sheets to fill out when we get home. <laughs> what? Like, they, you, they paid you money for you to have more work to do? It's just part of human nature. We want to feel like this is sort of exchange and we're supposed to do something. We like to be sort of motivated to action. So um, you might ask again, just what are they supposed to do with this? If you want them to click on the listing, tell them to click. If you want them to call, you tell them to call. If you want them to comment, tell them to comment, like, share, whatever it is. But ask them to do something. We'll switch to email real quick. Don't bother sending anybody an email without an action. On a really technical side, Google. Gmail is watching when emails come in. If I read an email in Gmail and there's nothing to do, um, after about six weeks, they may start throwing that in a promotional folder. Like, you know, you know on Gmail, you get these different tabs. You can turn those off, by the way, but everyone's got that sort of a default. And Google says, this person is receiving emails and not doing anything with it. So what they opened it. In Outlook, if you go down, 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 it's open, 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 open. That doesn't show action. Right? In email marketing, we talk about your open rate, but we also want to know your click-through click rate, your CTR. So if you're going to send an email, give somebody something to do. Ask them for the phone call. Ask them to text you. I do that all the time. If I can't think of anything, I'd be like, hey, uh, shoot me a text when you get this email. Just get them to talk to me. Like, I want to talk to humans. That's how we do sales, right? My guess is you guys, if you get someone chatting with you for any reason, then that's a reason to talk about something else, to get down the road to doing something else. So. On well, that AAA, right? Can you create something that they anticipate? Then is it positive so that they appreciate it? And then what in the world is supposed to do with that? Take action. Is that simple enough? That's kind of AAA. You can apply it to email. You can apply it to any sort of marketing. And so much marketing around. Go down the street, look at the billboards, and ask yourself, what am I supposed to do now that I read that? I mean, we have oh, there's a billboard, huge billboard by our office that said. Um, a bank that understands community. And a little logo in the corner. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that as a customer. Like, I, I'm driving. I don't, I just don't understand. That's $2,500 a month. But tell me that you understand community. And do you truly understand community if you're choosing a billboard to communicate community to me? Right? That's like going to Taco Bell to talk about being a foodie. Like, I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand the two, the two concepts are in conflict with one another. Right? So just, just slow down a second, especially because each of your names is probably your own brand, and as you build your own little empire or big empire, that name and brand is going to become really, really important. For my friends who do really, real, really well in real estate, they've worked many, many years to sort of create that messaging, and people know who to deal with. Um, I think, like, 
Patrick Showers is part of the Sioux Falls office, yeah, right? Absolutely. Buddy of mine, he's been in the real estate game for a long time. He's in mortgages. Or Tony Rashford, I think it's his partner, Tony's kids. Mm -hmm. um, they worked a long time, but they worked very hard to have like an association of their name with something. Social media, obviously, a cheap way to do that. But you've got to be sort of intentional as you go through it. Okay, so let's get into some nuts and bolts. And then I'll leave plenty of time for Q&A. You guys have busy days and appointments. You need to go make money, so I'm not going to keep you here forever. Um, all right. Any questions about AAA? Pretty simple? Okay. If you have staff that helps you, challenge them to show you how they're doing that. Challenge me. Seriously. Like, you wrote this email. What's our client supposed to do with this? Because you want your clients to do something. Otherwise, you're just taking up their time and email. You're taking um, you click on status. Or if you, if, that's fine. if you do it on your personal page, you just click on status. If you have a business page, you can also go live there. If you have Facebook groups, you can go live in a Facebook group now. They turned that on last week. So if you curate a group for any, whatever reason, you can also do it there. If you just update your status, it says photo video, live video, check-in, feeling, activity, which I never do. Um, and tag friends. If you don't see this, you need to update your Facebook. Like you just need to update on your phone. Your app is, is a version behind. And they rolled this out over the over the spring. So it's been sort of a little roll up. I think everybody should have it now. So what, I'll show you how easy this is. The live video. It says describe your live video because this will be the title of what people are going to see. The fun thing about this is every one of my friends is going to get a push notification that this is going live, which is kind of nice. Right, they're on. It pops up right away. It says they're going live. So, um, <coughs> Kdub, Rapid. Uh, showing, showing Facebook Live. So whoever taps on that, they're they're live with you. Yeah. So I can't see them. Right. They're watching live video of me. Right. Unless they change their preferences, the default is when they scroll through their timeline, that live video is just playing. <coughs> Do not be discouraged by the metrics. Anybody who scrolls by your live video is going to show a two-second view, and it'll show like you had 900 two-second views, and then it dropped off. Well, that's because they're there to scroll and buy it. Is that new wave now? <laughs> the wave shows interaction for replay, so we'll get, we'll get nerdy on that in a minute for you do a little bit more. So I see myself, and there's a little, I can turn the camera around, like I can show the whiteboard. So I can show myself. Turn it back around. All right, so there's me. See this? Okay, so then I click go live. I'm do this like three, two, one, so I can fix my makeup and my hair. All right, hey, clip around here live in Rapid City. I am training at the Keller Williams office in the Black Hills. You guys should come out and visit sometime. Um, they've got the best cookies and coffee in town. Well, they had the best cookies and coffee. <laughs> Anyhow, you guys should come out here and check out with them. If you ever move into Rapid, make sure you call this office. I think Joe wants the phone call, right? Is it Joe? Yeah, that's me, right here. Yeah, okay, so Joe wants the phone call um, if you're moving out here. And uh, if you guys would leave a comment below sometime, uh, it'd be awesome so I could show them that they're doing this. And so now I can see there's viewers popping up. So there goes one, and they'll come up, and they'll, depending on the time of day and your scheduling, you might have more and more viewers come up. So we'll let this roll for a second. See anybody else pops on. Josh, you'll pop on. Okay, so there's a little thumb thing was floating by. People like what I'm doing. You get these little sort of flutters of thumbs. Carmen, who's here in the room, joined. So now my friends that are on, I can see her join. So I can be like, hey, Carmen, thanks for hopping on. Appreciate it. Why don't you leave a comment below? And if she left a comment, it would come down here. Carmen, can you leave a comment real quick? We didn't plan this, so thank you for jumping in. There's three viewers, two viewers. If you schedule these, your viewership's way higher. Like, I didn't tell people, oh, write it, whatever the heck time it is, I'm going to be on. Like, I noticed this morning that me and Jason were watching the same Facebook Live. Yeah. Tim was on, too. Yeah. 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 Was it someone making breakfast? Or? No, it was the guy yeah. just doing the generation. <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Josh says, Clint, you are crushing it. Thanks, Josh. You're this pump in your own. Yeah, so Josh, give me the thumbs up. Thanks for the continue. Uh, yeah. Below. See how his name's popping up in the little like fairy thumbs are floating? <laughs> so you get some you get some feedback there, and then what happens is when we're done shooting this video, we're done shooting this video, and I hit I'm gonna hit finish, so heads up. Finish. It's a little delay, right? It's going to freaking outer space and back. So don't ever panic, just delay. It'll say upload a higher quality video. It's recorded it to your phone in HD. It's uploaded it in standard definition. If you're in Wi-Fi, 
it can upload a clear video. So if you're ever showing at home and you want really crisp video, at some point make sure that upload, the higher upload happens and Facebook will replace it. Do you have to have your uh, beep, post, and high def button clicked inside of the settings in the app for that? Time? I don't think so. Okay. Unless that's a, not a default. I've not messed with it at all. I mean, I'm just going with what's standard. So okay. I, don't, I don't know for certain, but I've never had to deal with that. You can save it to your camera roll. So if you're double dipping, if you want to do a uh, uh, house tour or land or something like that, and you're like, man, this was great footage I'll use for some other promotional thing, and I want on Facebook, you can save it on your phone and throw it on Facebook. hearts and everything show up on there? Okay, so <laughs> a couple things. Um, when you save it to your phone, no, hearts. Okay. Not so. When people go watch the replay, as of last week, some users, not everybody has this, and they get sort of nerdy, Facebook is monitoring engagement. How many people are on, how many people are liking and commenting in real time. Here in a few weeks, old live videos, you're going to see a blue wave going across, and you'll see when people thought that was a great part of the video, so you can skip to it. It's on there now. Right? It's not everybody, though. Not everybody has that. So um, let's say that, uh, I don't know, there was a, a, something going on, an outdoors activity here, right? There's a race, there's a rodeo, there's something going on, and it's like a two-hour live Facebook. This happens. You're like, I don't, I don't know what's going on. But you can see like an hour in, all of a sudden the viewership's through the roof. You can skip to that. So that's viewership or that's interaction? It's interactions engagement, okay. which is a mixture of likes, comments. Because I, I did that on a video I was watching, I just went to the to the high high, high part of it because it was really slow, and then of course, yeah, and like my brain was trained to go to that that spot, and then actually when I got there, I ended up hitting the thumbs up, yep. and it actually put the it adds that to it, it, it makes it, it more. Yeah. yeah. So when you move that forward, is it almost like moving fast forward? Yes, it skips to it. Okay, gotcha. Yep. So the interaction in the live video does that count once the video is done and posted? Yes. Does that count it towards your to rank itself. and affinity score and everything like that? Yes. It does. Keeps on trucking. Nice. Yes, it's really nice. Yeah. Um, you think about how, let's just step back for a minute from your own personal Facebook video. How is this going to disrupt television? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If now I can skip to the part of the show that's funny, the part of the news broadcast where everyone's engaged, <laughs> the basketball game where something's happening. Mm -hmm. So you think about that. Yeah. If you can just look down the timeline and be like, I don't know what's going on here in this baseball game, but it went like this, we're going to skip to that. So what will that do for ESPN? Because they're showing the highlights. Now you'll know where the highlights are at. This also means that you need to create an engaging experience because people are going to watch your video and it's like this. Wow. Like, well, never got more interesting than that, right? So they're really the transparency that Facebook's providing for the video experience could disrupt television, I think. But also gives you a great opportunity to see what's working and what's not. Joe, you might think you're really funny. And you're giving a house story, and you're like, oh man, I gotta wait till they do this. Wait till they do this, right? <laughs> and then we have one coming up, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then nobody, nobody cares. No well, but, but yeah, and Megan's going like this. So. <laughs> the funny part is probably the get no interaction. Happens all the time. Right. Yeah. 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 As you turn and fall down the stairs. It's going, to be, it's going to be interesting to see how it goes, but what an awesome way to sort of be a producer to show. How, could, how do you think you could deploy this like today? You could leave today and do this now. Like you could update, you could just walk out of here and be live. You'd be live while you're driving. I was watching a guy live, jumped off a mountain, a base jumper, oh. clipped his phone to his chest and dove off and it stayed live the whole way till he landed, which is pretty awesome. Think about sports, that'll do. Well, what could you do, what's some ideas you might have? You mess with this a little more, you mess with a little more, like what could somebody do? Open house for you. Open house. Open house, okay. Yeah. Coming soon. You must think. We can do all sorts of stuff. <coughs> Live testimonial at the closing table yeah. with the Ooh. experience. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, because you know, we're always trying to struggle to get that testimonial or that social proof. But what a better spot when you're sitting there and you're actually in the, the most, you've crossed the finish line, everybody's on the endorphins and happy and good. Turn it to live and you're like, what do you think? I, I think in my service. I think like if I got in the game, I would think like, man, I would say, okay, um, let's say I got a, 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 I sign the paperwork to have someone's listing. I've gone and looked, and it's now official, and I can announce it, right? We're not in this sort of pre. We got we have agency with this person, and I'm gonna say, okay, tomorrow I'm gonna go live in this house. I just signed. This is the best listing I've had all year. Jump on it too. I'm gonna give you a house tour. I've only got 15 minutes, so we're gonna kind of rock it through it. But the downstairs wet bar and then the, the walkout is epic. Two o'clock, I'll see you there. Now you're making it your own appointment television on Facebook. It doesn't cost you a freaking thing, right? And if they're not there at two o'clock, they can watch the replay. They can watch the replay. Yeah. 
You know what you could do? You could email your list and ask them to go join on Facebook. That's also probably pretty cheap. I mean, you can get creative with this. You can sort of like bring these platforms together. Just a question like, for, for, for the agents in the office. Your thoughts on, on video, they don't need to be perfect or polished or have many cuts. It should just be authentic and just be... I will tell you with video, you got to do a lot of it to get over the fact that seeing yourself and hearing yourself. I used to own a video production company, and I would travel and shoot video for people. And uh, people have a very hard time seeing what they're actually like. You know what I'm saying? You get your view of yourself and how polished you want to be, and then you see the video and you're like, geez, I sound dumb, or I stumble, or I, what I, what I was wearing the wrong thing that day, or you're really critical. That goes away with ex experience. At some point, you just go, well, that's how God made me. Let's do this. <laughs> right? You just get over it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, I, someone took a picture of me teaching from the back. And I was like, holy shit, I'm bald. <laughs> I haven't seen the back of my head in a long time. I haven't seen some hair. Jeez. Right? You don't, I mean, you don't, you don't know. Because you're not like it, always in that experience of, of self-critique. But in video, you have an opportunity, very low cost opportunity, to engage a lot of humans in the same moment. Think about compressing your time. You ever heard of time compression? Meaning, we went to lunch, it was you and me, right? You mean Meg and Josh. So for the value I added to real estate agents in Sioux Falls was one hour to one hour ratio. This is time compression, right? I don't know how many of you are in here, 30 of you, one hour, one, now it's one to 30. Well. I do marketing Monday at the bakery. Meg jumps on to catch maybe a marketing tip, ask a question, if that's some video stuff for, for, for Joe. Um, I'll have 700 people watch that video. So that was one lunch hour for me. I'm adding value to 700 humans. And then the replay can give me another thousand. It's been one hour of time, I've touched that many people. And I can show my personality or I got to show a property. You know what I'm saying? Like it's more engaging. And they get to be there. I think, I think about my wife. If we were to go through the house, the house we have now, we were in this weird situation where we were renting a house from a friend, happily. We were in McKinnon Park. If you've ever been in Sioux Falls, McKinnon Park is, right? So we've got this cool big house in McKinnon Park. We're renting it. Like, they lost their company, had to move, and they wanted to rent it, and they didn't want to sell it and keep it the family or whatever. So we're like, hey, we'll take a house in McKinnon Park. So we're there. We go to Josh's house for dinner. I kid you not, we pull into the driveway on Valentine's Day two years and three months ago. Phone call from my landlord friend that says, you have to be out of the house in two weeks. I go, ah, see, there's laws. <laughs> um, and I have four kids. Like, uh, I need to notice. He goes, no, you don't understand. Like, I'm asking for the favor of a lifetime. I have got to get that house off my books by the first of the month. I don't, I don't care what has to be true. you got to be out in two weeks. Okay. All right, done. I don't care how many bedrooms it is. I don't care if the bathroom <laughs> tiles from 1956 in pink. I don't care. Right? But you don't know that till you're there. The nice thing at Facebook is it's a time machine. It takes people there. They're in their office, but they're there. You were there yesterday at 2, and I'm there today at 3, but I'm there. And as you walk and look, I get to walk and look. If you have the reaction of, wow, that's a lot of Pepto-Bismol colored pink tile in the bathroom, but they did a good job. Are great. you dogging on my old house with the pink tile in the bathroom? <laughs> You've seen my bathroom. You've got a lot of pink tile, right? Um, so yeah, you, get to, you get to be there. They get that sort of personality. As if they were there, you were doing your normal job outside of social media, right? And that tour. So I would encourage you, yeah, if you can show a house, maybe some little quirky things, tease, have a little fun with it. You could be like, oh, the basement is awesome. I'll be showing that at the open house on Saturday. Peek the door, close it, turn the video off, just drive them nuts. Why not? Have some fun with it. You can do whatever you want, right? There's not like rules here. You might as well have fun. You create an engaging experience that they'll anticipate, appreciate, take action. If you're better belly to belly, then do what you got to do to get them belly to belly. If you're better on the phone, get them on the phone. If you're better via texting, then do that. All right? But why not use Facebook video? It's free. You're going to be, see it become a norm. Um, yes, sir. I'm going to play devil's advocate with 40, which is a little bit. So Facebook video, get your face on there. Mm -hmm. Do you have pro uh, my thought form is, and I've seen some of the where I've scrolled through. I see people with facing faces telling me I just scroll through. I don't care. Mm -hmm. So my question is, I mean, obviously you've had pretty good success with the little Facebook blurb where you're on Facebook Live with just your face talking. Do you have any problem getting engagement on that? Because to me, it'd be like, well, my mother and my good friend are the only people that are watching. The only people care that I have for what I have to say. Right. Um, people are not super fond of talking heads unless that talking head is really funny and engaging or informative. Especially, you know, with, with, with realtors, we see 5,000 suggested posts of this person talking to it, and it's, it's, it's just 
noise. The oh, first, I just care, so I'm the first few time. seconds, and you can edit this later in Facebook, post stopping the video. The first few seconds becomes the frame that people see when they scroll by. Right? Um, I, honestly, if I was in a house and they had a dog, I'd freaking start on the dog. And turn it off because people click on pets more than they'll click on me. I mean, you could be, you know, so you don't have to do, you don't have to say anything about the dog, um, or or whatever. But uh, yeah, I mean, you just have to kind of play with that and see. If you want to go one level more ninja than this, and you want to be Gary Vaynerchuk for a day, right? Um, subtitles, huge pain in the rear end. But the nice thing about subtitles, someone has to type them. I mean, this is get snarky. You could also use Fiverr <coughs> and have somebody do it for Fiverr. Um, you can do subtitles. Think about when you're in a meeting and you've disengaged. For some of you, that meeting is church. And, <laughs> and you're Facebooking. And a live video comes up, but you don't want to click it for the audio. And there's a talking head. And the words come up. You can read it without, going, without having sound. Right? You can be in a restaurant, meeting, bathroom, wherever, and not disrupt the environment. And more platforms. I'm willing to bet before the near Facebook just dictates your um, video. Facebook now will, di or YouTube will now dictate it. You can upload a video to YouTube and they will subtitle it for you in multiple languages at no cost. So the technology is getting really savvy. So I, I keep an eye on that. You have to learn to go back to your question. You have to learn what's engaging, what people like. Ask them. So I did a Facebook video and like I saw you were on, but then you were off right away. Like, what can I do to make it more interesting? And people will tell you. Okay. Uh, it looks sort of like this. You know, you open your Facebook, you click this little thing. Um, it says, what do you want to do? And then you're off to the races. Don't flip back and forth between your camera, like both cameras too much. People will get sort of motion sick because you have the front facing <laughs> camera and this facing. And it, it does a little pause. Yeah. I don't know how else to describe it. Like you lose audio <laughs> for like a split second when you switch cameras. And so it's, like, it's a bad user experience. I just sort of stick with it. And not a lot of... You guys remember, I mean, we all grew up with, like, our families having the Super 8 uh, VHS camcorders, and, like, your dad was chasing you doing soccer, and you watched the video, and, like, you could see nothing because it's like this. So don't do not do that. Um, there's, like, awesome little, like, $5 stands, you know, things you can clip to a desk. And selfie can, sticks. Selfie sticks. You can you make it less of a, like, off-the-shoulder experience. Okay. Periscope on Twitter. If you hate Facebook, but you're a big Twitter fan, you can do Periscope. There's one distinct video, uh, one distinct advantage of Periscope over Facebook Live right now. I mean, who's not heard of Periscope? Just like, okay. So Periscope is a, is a company that Twitter created to do live video prior to Facebook Live video. And when you post on Periscope, it tweets. And it's live in your Twitter feed. And this is interesting. I'll say if you're, if you work with professionals coming in from outside communities in bigger cities, more professionals are on Twitter than they are on Facebook for do, doing business stuff. <coughs> so if I'm trying to engage a larger, I'm getting ready to go to Chicago. I'll probably switch over to Periscope because I can hashtag Chicago, hashtag the loop. I can start bringing myself into a larger audience. Your Facebook live video is your Facebook friends or fans. That's it. And then if they share, then other people get it. But it's your ecosystem you've created. Periscope, it's anybody. So I'll show you. Periscope, free download. You log in via Twitter because it's owned by Twitter. So it looks like this. Not, it's, not, it's not complicated. There's a globe. If I zoom in anywhere on planet Earth, as I zoom in, it'll start pulling up. You see this? How all the little dots are pulling up? If I click a red one, this is live video right now. So there's a kid drinking orange juice. <laughs> there's a girl cleaning her room. Um, there's a volleyball game. Is there anything in South Florida? Let's go. If there is, it's usually Josh or I. Um, there's some old ones. So blue is a replay. We'll see in Rapid. Uh, Rapid City Fire Department Rescue Training. There we go. Three hours ago, aren't they hip? Wow. So like that. Drinking beer or something. So they're like uh, spanning, free spanning a, a, a space there. Hmm. So you think about what just happened. I live on the other side of the state, and I just happened upon something that is geographically relevant. Right. That's way different than Facebook, who's going to the people who, who said they want to follow you. Now, on this, it'll tweet to all of your Twitter followers if you have a Twitter following. 
they all get a notification that you're live. We can give you from all over the world. If you're ever on the news, it's a lot of fun. Uh, with the bakery, we get to be on the news all the time. We've been very close in the news media there. When you're on the news, like 5 a.m., right, they want you to come down and be on the news. I always ask to be on Periscope while I'm on the news. And then you'll have people from all over the world chatting on Periscope because you're broadcasting behind the scenes of the news. You know what I'm saying? It's super fun, and you get a huge audience. It's a different time zone and the whole nine yards. But Periscope works really simple. We can go live on Periscope while sharing. So you click this button. So this bit, there's the, here's what's recent in my followers. Venezuela, deep economic crisis, exploded in the political, whatever. And then here's the globe. And if I click this button, it looks sort of like Facebook. It says, what are you seeing now, people? Um, and if I start broadcast, like for life, that's it. Done. And so now, people on Twitter who are following me, or somebody, that little red dot has now showed up globally. I can, so now there's people are starting to join in. And the hearts. So, Josh, I don't know if you're on, you can give me some hearts. I got you. I got you. <laughs> you see these hearts over here? Yeah. Um, hey, Dak Bio, is that? Uh, that's Rob Nelson. Hey, Rob, how's it going? Um, so, Rob didn't know I was going to be on Periscope. I didn't announce it. I don't think I told you. I got a notification because I followed you. Yeah, so people on the other side of the state are now watching us do this, that, like that fast, which is pretty awesome. And then they can do the little heart thing, and the hearts show up in the replay. <laughs> Right? So then we're live. Like this is recording. It's just that simple. Uh, and there's hearts. You can double tap, turn the camera around. This is not complicated technology, right? I mean, you just walk around. Okay, check out this, or tell them something that's interesting. If you want to stop, uh, you just pull down and stop broadcast. That's it. So if you're not on Twitter, first you have to have a Twitter account and then you get the Periscope. Yeah, and you, I would recommend, again, I'm trying to give you options. Some of you may have a Twitter following. This is something to consider. If you want to build a Twitter following, something to consider. But it's sort of a Twitter version of the live video thing. I think it's really critical to stay. You have to have the Twitter and then that. that you have a Twitter account. Twitter yep. account and then get that app. Yeah, so you log into Twitter and then when you download Periscope, you touch one button and it just logs you in via your Twitter account. Up until four weeks ago, it didn't record. It stayed for 24 hours like Snapchat. Now it stays in your account. So they can go back and see it. Otherwise, it just would evaporate after 24 hours. So they, because Facebook video came out, they responded by making it recordable. Any questions on either of those? Sort of makes sense? Live video, figure it out. If you can't figure it out, find someone to figure it out. How long does it stay on the map? Three days, did you say? I think the map is 24 hours. Okay. I think, yeah. But you know what? If you wanted to, if you wanted to, I'm, I'm the type of person that's going and I want to be the authority on keywords on a subject, right? I want people to say, in Sioux Falls, on this subject, you got to talk to Clint Brown. So if I came to this office, my job would be this, anybody that moves here, I'm the authority on whatever part of the real estate world I want to tackle, whether it's stuff in the hills or just <coughs> new homes or what, whatever my thing is, right? In Sioux Falls, we're really positioning ourselves as sort of the authority of like development that matters to a future generation of Sioux Falls. So I would want to be posting stuff all the time that shows that I'm up on that. I'm in all those meetings. I know what that piece of land is going to be used for, who's going there, why they bought it, if there's a TIF. I know all that stuff. So I can control that and really position myself. Now as people look, you get on Twitter, people can be looking and if people Google, when you Google, <laughs> your tweets can show up in the Google. Those of you are SEO nerds, right? You could be like, new listing in Rapid City. And someone could search for new listing in Rapid City. And your Periscope video tweet could show up in your Google results ahead of your website. Because Google shows Twitter. You can kind of sort of get a lot of bang for your buck by just going live. Does that make sense? Yeah. If it doesn't, there's probably a 17-year-old in your life who's <laughs> crushing it on Periscope, <laughs> right? Do you got like a Qdoba here? Yeah. Okay, yeah. take them to Qdoba, because every 17-year-old loves Qdoba. You say, what do I got to do? Show me what it takes, and I'll help you out. Um, so it looks like this, not complicated. You can see past stuff, click, start broadcast, your life. Super simple. All right. 
Jump over to Snapchat. Whoever you're brave enough to be on Snapchat, Vaynerchuk is. Um, you can look him up, but you got to be able to handle profanity in every keynote speech he gives. It's something epic. Um, he runs one of the fastest growing multimedia agencies in the world out of New York City. Um, and is, has created something quite amazing. Um, he got up and someone asked him, do you like Snapchat? He's like, nope, I hate it. But my customers are there and they love it, so I'm there. That's all it took for me. Freaking figured out. Like, I'm not independently wealthy. I got four kids to feed. If my customers are on Snapchat, then I'll be on Snapchat. If I want to go catch trout out here, I got to go to where the trout are. I can send them to the parking lot. We pissed all day long. There's not trout out there. <laughs> right? I could. And you guys would be like, well, there's Clint. <laughs> <laughs> or I just go do what it takes to catch them. I go to the stream. I use the right baits, right? I go to the right time of day. Tie the right flies. Same thing here. If your customers are there, if your demographic might be younger coming into the area, especially young professionals under the age of like 25, 28, I guarantee you they're on Snapchat. They probably have moved on from Facebook, quite frankly. Josh, how old are you? Thank you. Would you say that's fair on the younger audience? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Heavy, heavy, heavy Snapchat. And my daughter's 14. She's like Facebook, gross. Mm -hmm. Instagram and Snapchat. There you go. So um, here's what I do on Snapchat. Snapchat is it's it's so simple it'll piss you off, right? Like you're gonna way overthink it. So, so if you if you want to get Snapchat again, any teenager you walk by can show you how to set up Snapchat. Any one of them. And they won't think you're creepy for asking because they know none of you adults know what you're doing. So like, here's another person. That's, that's that's not so when you when you load it, you're looking at yourself, right? It's all about narcissism. Here we are. There's me. Um, there's the direct messages from my friends, so I can send my friends video, photo, text, emoticons, same sort of stuff I can send in virtually every other platform. The piece that's interesting, if I swipe to the other direction, these are people's recent stories and updates. So Meg has posted something maybe here three minutes ago, so you post something maybe from the back of the room. Mm -hmm. um, my friend Sarah, who may be out here, Sam, these people all over the world posting stuff. But if I want to post something, say, Hey guys, I'm in Rapid City doing a training with the Keller Williams team. All these nice folks here. We'll see you soon. I'm done. It's recorded. It's up. All I got to do is say, where do I want that to go? I can send it to any one of my friends or I can just post it to my story as I go. And now, every one of my followers, when they get, they'll see that Clint updated his story. And the story's on a 24 hour revolving story. Here's what I would do with Snapchat I wouldn't get into the weeds with Snapchat. If I was in real estate and I was doing Snapchat, I would use it to tease. I would do the like, I just got the most epic meeting, this house is coming, this listing, this house has got a feature, you gotta check this out, go over to Facebook video, come to this open house. Because the videos are short, I don't know what's a Facebook, what's a Snapchat 15 video? Seconds. 15 seconds. 10 seconds, right? I mean, you can't do a dissertation, 10 seconds, you just gotta throw the sentence out that you're gonna say. But build hype, people like exciting, they like something interesting to look at. You can also do like retake photos. There's lots of funny filters like dog faces and all kinds of swapping faces. And that's fun if you want to do that with your kids. Your clients will probably not appreciate it as much as your children will. Um, but if you want to use Snapchat, you can do that now. For you and your professional, oh, we were talking about this. We were in, we were at Starbucks in the Alex Johnson Hotel downtown. They need an air conditioner. It was literally like 92 in the Starbucks. It was the hottest place. At, oh, I thought it was at Hot Yoga. <laughs> um, let's say that I was a young professional uh, or dealing with young professionals moving to town. That was the audience I wanted. Um, I would ask them which platform do you prefer to communicate on. I don't care. Pick it. Right? And then if they like the snap, if I was looking for houses for them, I would be sending them snaps of what I'm finding. Here's the kitchen. What do you think? Send it to the wife, the husband. Right? Here's the whatever. I'm in this apartment. I'm in this house and use it also as a communication tool. They're also gonna clear their snap notifications in front of everything else. And it's like, fast. And now you can live video back and forth. So just one touch, I touch a button and it brings up my camera and Josh's camera and we're, so we can go back and forth between live video conferencing and photos and video. So you don't have to like send food pictures or selfies, you don't have to do like what teenagers do. You can be professional about it, right? And show cool stuff. Um, I'm going to go tour the own second facility above the firehouse. I'll send lots of snaps to people back in town who want to know what that's like. Hey, check out the desk. Check out the lighting. 
they get this here, this girl's really nice, you should meet her. Does that make sense? Would you suggest, um, if you're using Snapchat for Realty, um, to have a business account set up or use your personal since? Um, you I, would use, I would use personal. Other people send them business ones. I, gotta, I just hate going back and forth between it. I, mm -hmm. Here's the deal. I just want to be, I want to have integrity and who I am at church, who I am at high who I am, it's all the same. I don't care if you know my kids. You're going to run into them into the bank anyhow. Mm -hmm. You know? And I'm not posting stupid stuff to Snapchat that I'm like, I don't want my clients seeing this. I live in a, I mean, Sioux Falls is small. Like, my kid gets hurt and we get stitches. Everybody knows. I get asked at church, gas station, work. I mean, it's just, everybody knows. So, I'm not getting drunk late at night and Snapchatting. I'm just not doing it. I mean, if there's social situations I don't want on social media, I'm not posting them. I don't have to post everything that happens in life. So, I keep it all the same. All right. One more thing here. Whoop. Turn back. So, Snapchat. This is like if I did Josh and myself, then we can see each other. That's what it looks like on the... Last one I would tell you to consider is Instagram, but you got to curate it. For those of you who are great photographers, learn Instagram. If you suck at photography, stay away from it. Nobody will put up a bad photography on Instagram. They just won't. Some of you probably just have skills out the wazoo of taking photos. You could crush it on Instagram. But you want to curate it. Here's a real estate agent I found. Those are pretty awesome photos of real estate. I'm just being honest. That's some stuff out of magazines. They're taking their whole accounts this way. You know, I mean, some people can take a picture of a cup of coffee and it looks gorgeous. Yeah. And some people take a picture of a cup of coffee and you're like, oh, there's no cup of coffee. Yeah. Some people just have an eye for it. <laughs> but you gotta you still kill it. <laughs> yeah, curate it. Nice thing about Instagram is you can go between, when you post to Instagram, you can say also send it to Facebook, Twitter, you name the platform and all at the bottom. You can send it out that way. Video, photos. It's good. See? You don't have to be on all of them. Guys, pick something and just crush that one. If you're on Facebook, just do that. Forget Snapchat. If you want to learn Snapchat because you like a younger demographic, go learn Snapchat and do that. Does that make sense? Don't get, don't get all over the place and try to keep it straight. All right, let me throw it up to a little uh, Q&A. And then those of you go skedaddle, it's 202 and 57 seconds. Telling us just to pick one, he must think we're not as smart as he is. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't have a, I don't have a choice. I don't have a choice. You know, with 450 active clients coming through my building and they range from ages of 19 to 87, I gotta be aware. Right. Uh, it's just how it goes, whether I like it or not. Twitter bores me. I got clients there. You know, so I do it. It's not about me. So questions, what what could I answer for you guys? That you have? I mean, I just one, get a lot of good questions. That's one of the questions I have about Twitter. Yeah. I mean, it's one one I really struggle with trying to I get more to. Mm -hmm. On a local level, small level, I guess, what do you see advantage-wise, agent-wise, people following, and maybe I'm behind the curve on that. What do you, what do, you do with Twitter? I would you know, keep it really simple, and Josh, you're, you got bigger Twitter following, more engaged than I do. Um, if I was Rapid City, I would hashtag Rapid City everything I did so that if someone's coming here and they're big, they use Twitter as their primary mode of communication, especially if they're from a big metro area, if they're a Denver kid moving here, they're especially moving here, they might go to Twitter and look up Rapid City. I just would want most of those tweets to be for me. So I'm sort of the resource. It might just be literally hashtag or pound symbol Rapid City, and then you're just going to show up in that thread. But what the content you put, I would use it sort of as an authority app. If you want to be an authority on investing or whatever kind of your bent is, I would post stuff on that. But be prepared to engage. I'll tell you, I have engagement high. I use hashtags, almost none if I don't. So if you retweet a story, you want to go ahead and put your spin on it and make a comment. Sure. I mean, because that makes it better than just, I've just regurgitated this thing. Really. Well, I'm just saying your opinion of what you thought. Yep. I'll tell you, you know what's interesting? If you're trying to get the attention of somebody, Gary B, for instance, uh, 6.30 in the morning, get on a tweet, Gary B, he'll tweet you right back. Oh, you never get a hold of him otherwise. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Of course. So I'm going to click on uh, what's on your mind. Okay. 
Yeah. So it says live video new. Oh, good. And you touch that? And you go live. Cool. I noticed there was no LinkedIn up there. Yeah, you know what, LinkedIn, I'm, I'm not sure how you move real estate in LinkedIn and engage the yeah. audience. Well, we were having this conversation. I completely 100% don't get LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, I don't, I know it's a great place for other professionals to connect and interact, but I don't know how it works in real estate. Um, I'm getting ready to go to Chicago. I got some B2B deals I want to do. I'll hop on LinkedIn to see who's, I'll see if there's a meetup, mm -hmm. something going on if I'm trying to get to in front of another professional. If I want to get the owner of a business, I'm probably going to get a hold of them through LinkedIn. They'll respond better. A lot of them pay for a premium account. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just dealing with a, a regular customer moving their stuff around, they're, they've probably not updated their LinkedIn in four months. Okay. But CE, the C-suite or a VP level of companies, they'll be hammering it out mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, typically. So you have LinkedIn again. What, what else can I answer? Um, I've never used live, so I'm just curious. Live is live. There's no, basically you're live, you can't delete it, or you can't. You can delete it, it afterwards. afterwards. But when you're alive, people, are, people can't see it. They see it right then, right there. Here's a way you can sort of cheat it. You could use your phone and record video a few times as though you're going live. Give yourself a dry run or two. Right. Do walk through a house, go back and watch it, and be like, man, that's I was normal. not on camera that's at all. I <laughs> <laughs> have my face showing, right? Okay, okay, I'm going to do this again. <laughs> you delete it, try again, until you get sort of comfortable with that medium. Okay. And I just want to reiterate, uh, when you when you do the live thing, yeah. you can save it to your phone. Yep, right, right at the end. Can you do stuff to it, like uh, subtitles if you want. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can suck it into something and... Yeah, you can throw it into Final Cut or, or, or right. iMovie or mm -hmm. upload it to some of the... YouTube, whatever you want. Sure. Is there a way to somehow put in your company name if it's like showing your house? Because you have to do that by state law. Um, on live video, I probably would do it on the status. <laughs> okay. Like, uh, and you could edit it post live. So once you save the video and you're done, you can go back and edit your status and put in all your sort of legal mumbo jumbo. I don't know that you have a way to stick it over the top of the video. Or you can just say it when you say it. You can just say it. You need Williams, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, can't just you do it while you're talking? Yeah. Yeah, that would cover okay. it. You can, you can do the worm while you're talking. I mean, you are <laughs> that would be good. Like but you know what? You get a lot of engagement. Do you want to pour you? All right. Yeah, you don't pray now. I think I I know the name Greg Cardone, yeah. He does that live video, like, nah, he's got a jet, you know? Mm -hmm. So he's always in his jet, and he's trying to be sweet. Yeah. So my business partner, Brian, is friends with Brian, and does, like, his power circle, oh, pay him a million dollar oh, things, yeah. you know? Yeah. 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 What else is sort of, is there anything else I, I can answer? Okay, you're, you're not going to leave here an expert. Just embrace that. You're going to lean into the discomfort of learning this. <laughs> you're going to do it wrong. It's okay. Delete it. Start over. Right? Try it again. And, and, and learn what it takes. And when you got into this business, you had to learn what it took to do a sale, to get someone to call you back, to be friendly, to move the paperwork along. You had to learn all of it. So this is something you got to learn. But I think you'd be surprised how powerful it is if you do know how to use this. You have a lot of contacts and you're going to have a lot of power to harness, right? If you've got 500 friends here or fans here or whatever, you can reach out to them and make something happen for your clients. If I'm if I have a house and I want you to sell it for me, I'm buying your ability to market it. That's why I'm paying you a commission. So the more ability you have to market it, the more valuable you are to me. The more likely I am to come to you because you got a big audience and your audience responds. So for those of us who have yes, our personal page, we have stuff to do. 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 On both end, or would you do just on one or the other, or share it? I would probably, if you have got a nice professional following, you can post it on a professional page, go live there, and then share it afterwards. Okay. To a personal page, or you can go the other way around too. Yeah. Okay. If you really want to, if you really want to sort of a hack on this, and you have a team, I don't know how many of you have staff that help you. When you go live, have them immediately go share the live mm -hmm. on whatever other pages you control or their pages. Because you could go live and make a share on her status that her boss is live. Now all her friends got notification that you're live. Mm 
and you have three people on your team, that's three or four humans who now hold their fans, you know what I'm saying? It starts to multiply. And you can have a bunch of people join in on the line. You can have your clients go live with you going live touring their house. Say, I'm going to go live, and I want you to share that to your Facebook because I'm trying to sell your house. Maybe well, your friends want to buy it, so you go, you share my live status, and we'll see if we can like sort of multiply our efforts here. We're going to try. All right, guys, I'm going to let you boogie. you got stuff to do. I'll be here for a little bit more. Um, if you got questions, I'll hang out and answer as much as I can. You guys have been fantastic. Thanks for all the questions, and thank you for all the questions.